I think I missed the way of life a little bit. I think there is something, there's something really unique uh, about Saudi and its way of life. People are very relaxed. In a country like Saudi's, you probably can get by with English. Mm -hmm. Like loads of people speak English to a point where I wasn't kind of forced to learn Arabic. And I think that it, there were those moments where I was like, I'm actually interested in this. I'm genuinely, genuinely interested in learning this language. I think there's a skepticism in other countries. In the UK, if you, if someone's looking to help you, they're, they're always skeptical of, of how much they can help you. But I think that here there is this real sense of, if I've got something to give you, I will absolutely give you that. Yeah, and, and I don't expect anything in return. Uh, exactly. It's, yeah. Wanted to ask you, are you comfortable talking about your accent? Yeah, of course they are. Can you tell me what happened? Uh, yeah, so about um, coming to six years ago, I was uh, teaching in Sweden and I, um, I dived into a lake that was shallower than I expected and I broke my neck. Yeah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Welcome to a new episode of the Mo Show podcast. Uh, I'm just checking that all the angles are working. I have uh, two gentlemen today that were uh, sent to me. That sounds a bit barbaric. Uh, <laughs> sent to me or recommended to me from a good friend, Hisham Farugi, who was on the show. Uh, their story is remarkable. They lived in Saudi for the longest time. They left. They're back now. They gave the commencement speech at, uh, was it the commencement speech? Uh, you so gave the graduation. Graduation yeah, speech. A, like a keynote speaker at the Fun. graduation. Fantastic. Um, and, uh, and I was like, yes, I would be honored to have them on. Matt uh, and Jared, who is alter ego, is Khalid, I'm told. <laughs> yes, yes, Khalid, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, honestly, thank you for taking uh, the time to coming, uh, for incoming on the show. Uh, it's probably the least episode that I've ever planned in terms of what I have written down here, which is nothing outside of your names. If we can just start from early days, I mean, you mentioned... Jared, that you came here, or was it you, Matt, from the age of one? That was him. Yeah, that was me. From the age of one. Yeah, you... 20 months old, like one and a half. Yeah, I had my second birthday. Okay. Yeah. yeah. What What brought you initially to Jeddah all those years ago? Well, well, our parents are teachers, so they were teaching at the British International School. And, uh, it's called Conti, Conti school. then, maybe. Conti. Conti. Yeah. Conti. yeah. Is that Conti? called Conti anymore, is it? No, it's now just called yeah, the yeah, ISJ. Yeah, yeah. yeah. People still call it Conti. But it was the continental school it started as, and then, okay. it, and then it changed its name. But it's kind of still got that ring to it saying Conti. Yeah. It's now just BISJ. Now it's BISJ, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So your parents both teach, teach at the school? The school. They taught there, yeah, for, for 15 years, yeah. Wow, my goodness. And how, uh, and did you go up until the uh, last year there, up until the age of uh, I left for my last two years. I, I was actually back in Britain, yeah. Okay. Going back to near London but yeah for 15 years so it was basically our formative years and okay. most of my life so far so that's uh that's crazy that's to say for energy Dowie so that's it's, uh, that's how it's it, it, it's, <laughs> it's it's I'm just like trying to wrap my head around it because someone <laughs> who speaks like you and looks like you should not be pronouncing <laughs> it <laughs> I do surprise a lot of people I'm not gonna lie yeah when I start speaking Arabic they're like it's, it's that but you can <laughs> you can speak it huh? you can you're conversational him, yeah. Matt how about you <laughs> I don't live up to the same kind yeah. of levels that he does but um I, and my, my arabic is is awful like it's not it's not as great as it should be mm -hmm. to be honest in my last couple of years everything. i can still read everything all the all the, all the letters i remember remember every letter but i can't uh, I, i've lost it all because it's been such a long time whereas you kept it up and i studied it at school though i did study at school my last two years um at school i did arabic abanisha for like ib and i kept it up right to the end i was speaking it and i th i think it's it's the issue is like in a in a country like saudi's you probably can get by with english mm -hmm. like loads of people speak mm -hmm. english to a point where i wasn't kind of forced to learn arabic and i think that it, there were those moments where i was like i'm actually interested in this i'm genuinely genuinely interested in learning this language mm -hmm. and it was only it was too late towards the end to kind of pick it up i just i wish i could have kind of kept it up to be honest there were le there were less or fewer pressures but, yeah yeah i think um, the turning point for me really was uh, when I was I was traveling around or across Jeddah and uh, I got into a taxi one day and I was like, hi, can you take me to like Talia Street? And he was like, uh, and I was like, okay, I'm going to have to say, uh, you know, you know, like I have to learn all of the Yassad you know. Pronunciation is, is fantastic, honestly. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. taken a while to, to get there, I would say. Yeah, I like to, I was around a lot of different uh, Arabic speakers from different dialects at school. So uh, it was really fun hearing all of the mocking from 
from different yeah, yeah. like the whether it was like the Lebanese you know, yeah, yeah. yeah. there's got to be like over the, like 10 15 dialects oh, or the accents yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it doesn't make your job easier in trying to understand the language no and I and I think that that's one of the reasons that it was so difficult for you is because you were learning Fusha in school exactly and yeah. if you try and speak Fusha to people they're just like yeah, like, am I writing a letter? Yeah, oh, Shakespearean. Yeah. How art thou? Thou. thou. Like, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. And you know, that's it's an interesting point that you raise because why don't you teach kids something that they can use in life? Hmm. Like, for example, all the fractions and all this, the, the ridiculous maths equations that we had to do back mm -hmm. in the day. I mean, do we do we use it today? I mean, maybe no. maybe you do if you're at NASA. Yeah, you know, yeah. And, and none of us are. Yeah. So yeah. I, I just I, I have a question mark over why the fusha. Why did we have to go into such deep, intricate math oh. class if it wasn't our major? I completely get you, actually. Uh, when I um, studied, I studied Arabic at university after I left. Uh, I think that... Where was school? Which um, uh, Exeter University. Exeter. It's, like, it's really good for Arabic and Middle Eastern studies. And uh, when, when I went on to actually do advanced Arabic, it was like I was learning like... Uh, it's just more... Mamnu'a min al-sarf. Like all of these very intricate grammatical al-qawa'id i'rab harakat like all of these very complex uh grammatical uh like uh, they're not they're not theories they're actually applications but um that you will never use in never your day to day life never used but I, what i will say is that learning any other language after has made it so much easier because you understand exactly what the the uh, the application is and and what they're referring the to the framework and, of the language the, yeah the framework of learning the um, the acquisition of it it's it's fascinating not an easy language Arabic no 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 and it's but it's very mathematical like if you look at um, Arabic numbers for example mm -hmm. the way that they are phrased I don't know if if you ever learnt it like uh, looking at the khams uh, uh, you know this kind of thing it's it's absolutely fascinating never used ever um, so I, I don't think any anybody would ever think through the uh is it feminine or masculine is it uh in the singular or plural exactly past tense Dhamma, future like tense all of the exactly so so it, it changes everything yes but completely unnecessary in english it's uh sat and in arabic it's 10 different deviations for jealous ajlis jealous ajlisu jealousu uh jealous to him yes uh or Julissa. Julissa. Well, yeah, 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 yeah. That's in, in, in the in the more formal it's yeah. stuff. It's yeah. And then like how it connects as well, like a modulus. Like as well. Like it's yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah. It all kind of connects as that's what it's inspired right. a diagram. Why I absolutely love the language. Why I wanted to continue studying it afterwards is because of the the Jadr system, like a Jadur Jadur mm -hmm. and looking at all the different um like even looking at um alama to uh it's like to learn or knowledge or you have muallim, you have teacher, alam. Uh, the few well, words I do know, I'm yeah. just gonna just call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like, no, you're like, good. I don't know none. I don't know none. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Conversation the other day, and I was like, I'm understanding this. Why am I understanding this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I had a great language, reverse uh, set of circumstances to you. I left at the age of 11 to the UK, mm. and that's when I realized that it's uh, it's a, it's a tough language, even for those who grew up their first 11 years speaking it. Have you felt that it uh, was something that benefited you when you moved back to the UK in any way? Um, when I first moved back, I think it was just very interesting for people. They turned out, like, oh, you speak Arabic. And it was, I, I guess I took it for granted. I was a bit kind of like, oh, yeah, that was very normal. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I realized that actually it was uh, it was something I really liked and enjoyed. And so that's why, that's what kind of motivated me to uh, to study at university. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, I, I but I like the language a lot, and I liked learning languages in general and just how they work. Um, and then going on to study at university, I realized I uncovered all of these different, yeah, like the grammatical patterns and things, and that's what um, made me love the language so much. I think watching the odd movie would refresh your uh, your Arabic uh, yeah. memory as well. That's uh, it's one of the better ways to learn a language. Yeah, so watching watching movies. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I mean, it's why. Americans, uh, but people have an American accent, accent yes. because of American yes, media. Yes, like yes. people always say, "Oh, I learned English from friends," yeah. and therefore they have an American accent when mm -hmm. they speak. Totally. For me at university, it was mostly just surprising people, that, like any Arabs who were on my course or any Arabs who were walking through the streets of like the middle of of like a town in Lancashire. Mm -hmm. I just go uh, and they like, 
goodness gra- yeah Who's this kid yeah, why is yeah, he speaking yeah. arabic at me am i am i having a stroke like what's what's happening like, it's so just looking weird. up into the sky god is that <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> bizarre and, but that immediately brings you closer together if it you're does. speaking a language especially uh, one like arabic so far away in a far-flung country you immediately kind of there's an affinity between you there's a connection there's a reason and i think that's with any language but um, but I think accents and everything, especially when you when you're able to kind of speak with a similar accent to somebody else, it, it, there's a sense of I think it's a, a, like in the UK as well. No matter whether you speak exactly the same language, if you have a similar accent, there's this some weird kind of connection. connection yeah, 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 definitely, mm-hmm. absolutely, definitely. Um, what's the most thing you both miss about? I mean, we're going to get into the changes that you've seen since you've left, and and it's actually. You, you two are like the perfect case study <laughs> because you left before everything changed. 2010? Uh, we left 2012. 2012, yeah. 2012, yeah, yeah. brilliant, perfect. You guys yeah, are the yeah, yeah. perfect yeah. Specimen, <laughs> specimen I need for this experiment. <laughs> I was going uh, to people, the first thing is that, hi, how are you? Oh, it's changed so much since you've yeah, left. Yeah. Like, what do you make of the changes? Yeah. Everyone says this all the time. Yeah, it's, it's um, what do we miss so much about it? I think, well, like, I was not going to just simply say I'll bake, but like, I was going to say like... <laughs> well, that hasn't changed. Yeah. <laughs> Although the menu has become more extensive. Yeah, and there's so many more of them and the branding and everything. And there's yeah. now little pop-up I'll bakes everywhere, but no. no they're, um, they're, they're in Riyadh now as well. Was, and the Eastern yeah. Brothers. They used to just be a Western, Western yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. focused. Yeah, they now they used to come from Riyadh just yeah. to have I'll bake. Dubai as well. Yeah. They're there now. Wow. So, yeah, my wow. friends in Dubai are, are, are over the moon with the, with it. So 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 that's one thing that you missed. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, just the fast food, really. The, yeah, uh, and, and, and the fast food you can't get that, you know. Um, I I don't know. I think I miss. I think I miss the way of life a little bit. I think there is something. There's something really unique about uh, about Saudi and its way of life. I think it, it obviously the, it's similar in other countries where there's extreme heat and similar across the Gulf. But there's something about the way of life in Saudi in which people are very relaxed and that's what we have as disadvantages and as benefits but genuinely because of it i think people are so much nicer in the way they can help you and more laid back definitely yeah. more laid back more time as well yeah no one's rushing no no it's the first thing i notice when i'm in the uk and i actually miss it because i like the contrast you know you you, you yeah. yearn for what you don't have mm-hmm. yes and when i'm there and i see the way people march like the walking pace there mm-hmm. with like someone mm-hmm. running mm-hmm. here and to see someone which i see every day having their lunch while marching yeah it shows you that that the the pace of life is and london and new york are extreme examples but over mm. here it's way more relaxed yeah. and, and it makes sense for you to say I'm, i miss the relaxed life over here yeah yeah i think there's something that, that has obviously differences vast differences in culture from every country you go to but there's something about being here in which if people can help you they absolutely can that will and I think there's a skepticism in other countries. In the UK, if you if someone's looking to help you, they're they're always skeptical of of how much they can help you. But I think that here there is this real sense of if I've got something to give you, I will absolutely give you that. Yeah, and, and I don't expect anything in return. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah. It's uh, yeah. yeah. It's very very common. More common when I when I moved back here in 2010, um, and and joined the company that I worked for for the past 13 years. I started traveling Saudi a lot more. I was mm. very much Jeddah central for me. I mm. barely even went to Riyadh. Mm. Then I started going to uh, the northern parts of Saudi, Hail, Tabuk, down south to Abha. I got to mm. meet the thoroughbreds of Saudi, mm. the Bedouins. Mm. You want to talk hospitality? That's where I realized where it started from. Mm. Not the city, not us city slickers, the yeah. Bedouins. Yeah, uh, That's really where hospitality was born uh, and just radiates across the country from the tribesmen mm-hmm. and women. Like in, in Hail, can you believe, and, I, and I've said it on many episodes, but it gets me when I saw for the first time that nobody, or let's say 90% of the people residents of Hail, which is a major city, million people there, just, just shy of. Mm. No one locks the front door. Wow. It's open. 3 a.m. Yeah. The first thing, honestly, that I... First thing that came to my mind, that like the mosquitoes and the like, the yeah. hell mosquitoes here. Yeah. Front doors open, very normal for someone walking by or, or walking through the neighborhood to go in, have a cup of coffee, whether the, the 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 owner is in the house or not, and the date, and be on his merry way. Which country in the world in the world has something similar to that? I mean, again, you know, these people still live the way they did two, three hundred years ago. Mm. Our front door of our tents open, front door of our houses. Are, 
and I don't want to hijack the conversation, no. but if, if you had the opportunity or, if, or hopefully you do one day, explore different parts of Saudi. I would love to. Mm. Yeah, we, uh, we've, I mean, you've been around a little bit, I think, yeah. you went to Wahhab Al-Qurita. Yeah, I've been to different yeah. parts of, of Saudi, but we did sometimes on camping trips yeah. and things like that, and there were times where we did stay out in like some of the wadis. Medin Salah. And Medin Salah. Yeah. Al-Ula. Places, al now, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it was, it, it was incredible, like, there were Bedouins who would stop and would be like, oh, we're on their territory, mm. or like, you know they don't speak the same language, but the, not, the first thing they would like say is welcome, like yep. yeah. or or some something of that nature. Yeah. Ultimately, like you are welcome, you are always welcome here, and it's just it, that I think I think you're right. There's very few places. I mean, I think you you would struggle to find it in many places. You you probably would, but I think that's something that we definitely miss that exists here. Mm. There's something about the nature in which yeah. our friends were like as well at school. There was always a giving sense um, of if I've got something, I'll 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 kind of spread that yeah. throughout everyone. Right. I think I think one thing that actually always uh, comes back to me is uh, we had a well at least I did a sense of reverse culture shock when I moved back to the UK. And what are the distinct <laughs> memories? No, really, really. I thought oh, you said that the other day. I think it's just culture shock. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. it's still. I think it's still a culture shock. But yeah, I know it's. Yeah, it's just culture shock because like Arab at heart, maybe. But I, I remember going to a party in the UK, and I was a, I was a friend of a friend attending. I didn't know the host, and I went straight up to the host, and I was like, "Hi, my name is Jared. It's lovely to meet you." And he was like, "Yeah, okay, um, cool." There was a lot of people, and I was like, "Okay, nice one." And I turned around to the person next to him that he was with, and I said, "Hi, my name is Jared. Nice to meet you." And he was just like, "I don't, I don't know you." And I was like, "Oh, you don't say hi to people you don't know." Like, like is he on the list? Yeah, yeah. Jared, it was so strange. Whereas in Jeddah, like you would go around, you go to a party, you say hi to every single person at the party, whether you know them or not. You know, you just like I don't know. It was just the thing. You take your time to really yeah. just I don't know, be friendly, be respectful. I don't know. I think so, uh, hosp hospitable or hospitality is is. Is, is again, I think, what's tied into yeah. uh, what you're saying. Mm. Um, and, and, and it's maybe just more, I mean, I, I don't blame those in the UK or, or, the, or the person because yeah. they haven't, it hasn't been embedded in the culture as much as it has been over here. Yeah. And, and, and I think as Saudis opening doors to, to tourists and you have people visiting Saudi at a rate that we've never seen before, it'll be a nice thing that people who do come visit and they see what hospitality is like here to incorporate it in their countries. Like when I go to the West, I really, really enjoy seeing how zero trash there is on uh, mm -hmm. on the streets, um, something that we haven't perfected. Mm -hmm. So I think if you, you know, the, the most thing that I think the, the crucial thing to get from traveling is to incorporate best practices that you see from them. And, and, mm -hmm. and if hospitality is our thing to export, mm -hmm. maybe throwing trash in the bin would be something we can pick up yeah. from, uh, yeah. from other countries. And, and also respecting differences. I think that's the thing that I always get from, yeah. from traveling. That was, we were so lucky that we were in like middle of the middle of the world, almost if you, <laughs> you look at the globe, but like we could go to many different parts of kind of like Asia and stuff that we did with our parents mm. and, and also living here, understanding like the different cultures that exist all over the world is not just taking those practices as well, but understanding like, oh, that's different to me and that's okay and that's all right because I think so many people exist in their own little bubble and aren't able to just accept that that person is different to me and that's all right because I think people are so stuck within that small little world that um, it, we we really benefited from that from being in, in, in an international school as well. So it was so normal to like have people come in in their native dress and see that and not be weirded out by it and, mm. and, not, and not think... Oh, that's different to me. I don't dress like that, and and I think that 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 really, yeah, it, it was. It's it's amazing to to think that we had that, and we didn't even realize we had that until mm. until later on. But when you speak to other people who haven't left their house or ha you know haven't left their town, their city, their country, or or their continent, they don't. There's a kind of um, animosity towards it because yes. there's a lack of understanding. Yes. So many people, when we used to speak to them in the UK, we say we grew up in Saudi Arabia. They'd be like what you grew up in saudi arabia isn't that isn't that dangerous or isn't that just sand and camel how did she get to school how did she get to school? Is it on a camel is it this kind yeah, of thing? So gets all the time and it'd be like it's like did you live in a tent what was that like yeah. and uh, ignorance is real yeah. 
And I think just now it's changing the perception. Mm. Yes, yeah. in the last yeah. couple of years, yeah, yeah, it's changing. Yeah, that it's not it's not desert. It's not camels. It's not uh, gunshots. Yeah, yeah, she's safer than any place in the UK. Yeah, mm. exactly. Um, but uh, tolerance is the word. I think you. Yeah, you, uh, you yeah, exactly. Just to have tolerance for for one another. <laughs> Mm. And um, and you know what Dubai does it well. I, I think uh, with all the nationalities that are there, I think two hundred nationalities, something ridiculous, the number of nationalities mm. that live there. And because the indigenous is seven eight percent representation of the country, you take them aside. It's really like a global village where you just have it's a melting pot of different nationalities and religions, and it it just works. What else? Okay, so. Uh, remember this thing on Instagram a few years ago where you had this 10-year challenge? People used to take a picture of themselves 2010 and then in 2020 and then you compare the two. It's perfect because you come back at a chance to compare everything you saw then against now. Have you managed to experience the uh, attractions that are happening here? Have you? What's the first thing you noticed besides al <laughs> uh, What have you noticed that was eye popping to you gosh just so much we, we, so many we, we, women yeah. driving guys yeah. it has to yeah be. <laughs> i think yeah yeah women oh. driving was the first i think actually uh, at the airport we saw um uh, a girl in a t-shirt and it was just a bit kind of like oh no i buy it wow that's uh, that's, <laughs> yeah. The first, you know? yeah. Yeah. that's the first yeah it's become optional um, yeah. yeah yeah so that was uh, we didn't actually know that i didn't actually know that a buyer's become optional like yeah. i i think that was something I'd heard. Some people mm. were, were going out without a buyers, but I didn't know that that was like something that yeah. everyone was now doing. Yeah. Mm. And I was like, wow, okay. Fair 10 enough. years ago to wear a non-black would, would, would be a story. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And you'd get like kind of harassed by some of the religious police. Yeah. Which yeah. is another um, thing we noticed yeah. now is not a thing. They're more relaxed. Yeah. 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 Um, the, we, we remember so much. So just going around, we were like, that building's new, that building's new. Oh, that's no longer a thing. Or yeah. yes, yeah, so that was that was big. Um, a lot of the like roundabouts that we remember are no longer like- Relax, thank yeah. God. Yeah. <laughs> they just don't work in our city. <laughs> because with roundabouts, courtesy is needed. And that's something that we yeah. s- strengthen. Uh, courtesy al- along with knowing where to put our trash. Um, but yeah, yeah, definitely yeah. some of the roads have um, changed. The, the Corniche. The Corniche. Yeah. Incredible changes. That's, uh, yeah, because really we remember it when it was literally just like, um, <laughs> to put it lightly, um, no, it was actually very polluted. It was, um, it was actually quite damaged. Yeah. Like it was an eyesore. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. It was just quite. Um, there were some nice parts to it, but it wasn't somewhere you you could literally go for a nice long walk. Correct. And if you did, you'd have to kind of stumble your way yeah. through these kind yeah. of like yeah. concrete blocks and bits of sand and not step on the road and oh mm. I've stepped on the road and step back off again it's beautiful I think it's Jeddah's best story of it, the last decade yeah that's stunning, stunning yeah. now just stunning. if you look at how many people go to it on a daily basis how mm. many lives are touched by that it's become an attraction yeah mm. definitely. And, and really like I've had foreigners that, that have come in to Saudi to come into Jeddah and said it beats anything globally yeah like like South Beach in Miami uh, what's Abu Dhabi's Corniche? They're, they're, they were trying to place where in the world is there a boardwalk as pretty as this? Mm-hmm. Um, so, so that's a major yeah. upgrade, honestly. Yeah, definitely. The Corniche was uh, was one of the biggest Im- improvements. I yeah, we, we went a, on a walk down it last night. Yeah, it was amazing. Stunning, yeah, and it's yeah. just a, and it's just continuous as well. It's not stopped by anything. It's not you know there's no particular breaks in it until I think maybe you get to the F. The, the track. track. Yeah. yeah. I think that's that's probably a big change. That wasn't well. here when you were here. No, it was not at all. I wonder damn well it wasn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's that uh, that's change. pretty cool. Oh. The, the, um, the, um, I think the embracing of art and culture as well. I think mm. that's something we, we literally just came from the, the last day. Benali? The, the Benali was Today is the last day? The yeah. last day. Really? And it was yeah. incredible. It's one of the best art exhibitions I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially yeah. Islamic art exhibitions. It's, it's incredible. And it's... It's to, but it's just something you would never see have seen here before, and it's something that I just I'm so um, like almost proud for Jeddah mm-hmm. and and this country to have embraced because that is something I I can imagine a long time ago people have been like no we're not having something like that here. yeah and and it's it it's so carefully thought of and 
and it's and it's very welcoming and open for people who are, who are non-Muslim as well. Mm. It's something that you can experience regardless of that. It's not preaching. Mm. It's not. It's not forcing itself yeah. on you. Very it's, interactive. It's yeah. very yeah. It's it's very friendly and welcoming in that sense. Well, the, the, these are one of the fruits of Vision Twenty Thirty. This yeah. is yeah. this is a, a direct uh, KPI under the Ministry of Culture. Yeah. To to have the populace and the tourists interact with uh, with art and and a museum. Yeah. Um, and that's something we were lacking back in the day. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, he said in one of his speeches, he said that how is it that you have the Qiblat al-Muslimin where all Muslims turn to pray on a daily, five times a day, um, that when they come and visit, there isn't a mat'haf, there isn't a museum for them to visit memorabilia and experience. Like, how is it that we don't have that? Mm. And we were all scratching our heads thinking, you're right, how is it that we don't have that? And I think the Ben Ali is the first little hint of something along those lines where we have a museum that addresses the rich history of Islamic art and, and Islam in general. Mm. It's uh, been three times, by the way. It's, mm. I just wanted to hear what you had to say about it. Yeah. It's, it's flawless, really. It is. Mm. And the way they repurpose the Hajj terminal as well. We'll put some We've pictures never up. Been. Yeah. Never been. We've no, no. never been. Yeah. 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 Passed by it dozens of times. And yeah, we've, we've always wanted to kind of... Um, be underneath those those huge, uh, I guess, this almost sail tent yes. looking, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, it's it's uh, quite calming and also very um, it produces so grand. A, uh, yeah, it's so, so grand, but it also produces a kind of uh, ventilation. Yeah, that is very yeah. unique. Yeah, true. Um, and uh, you feel small there as well. Like yeah, it's yeah, so open yeah, space. So grand. As far yeah. as I can yeah. see, yeah. they did really well. Today's the last day, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Such a shame. I'm really hoping that they can do something with some of the art there and and kind of bring it to some of the other museums that are around yeah well sure, they're they're absolutely. moving too because I, I did a, a few jobs with them i yeah. handled a few moderating sessions there so i went actually maybe seven or eight times um so there is a benali coming up end of year uh my goodness i don't know if this is confidential or not uh, i'll find out december jan uh is when it's going to start again and, okay. and i think in in riyadh that's yeah. great. Okay. I should do one in Al Ula to send more traffic there. Yeah. Uh, that was a month. See now. There is, will be. There is yeah. Yeah. More to, uh, are there international flights to Al uh, no. Paris, there is. Wow. Fly Dubai flies. Oh, oh Dubai. actually, yeah, yeah. I did hear about that from Paris. By the way, I called that two years ago on a podcast. Oh. I said that give it a year or two and yeah. international flights from Europe will fly to Al Ula. And wow. literally six months ago, Saudi Airlines puts a flight in from Paris to Alabama. Yes. Two I, or three times a week. I work with um, Saudi Airlines. I should know that. <laughs> yeah, I have. Absolutely. But yeah, okay. Translation, cool. right? You do some translation uh, work? I, actually, I work for like a data company hmm. and um, I deal with a lot of uh, Middle Eastern clients. So yeah, it's 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 really good. I get to use my Arabic. See, I told you that I had a feeling that you can use leverage on the Arabic that you do know yeah. uh, and act like a bridge from, from east to west. Yeah, yeah, in so many ways. Yeah. Yeah. I Because I I do feel half and half, you know. I do, when people ask me, oh, where are you from? I, I literally cannot say, oh, I'm from this place because I feel like this, you know, this was half of my life. Yeah. So It's very complicated as an answer when people ask where I'm from and I go, I'm not really sure. Is it where my parents live now? Is it where I went to? It can't be where I went to uni. I didn't spend long enough in 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 the UK. Mm. But it but it I, I'd say oh yeah I'm I'm British I guess. But I grew up in Saudi Arabia and it's always like that that added kind of kind of element to it because most people would have no. I mean most people judge you on how you look, don't they? And they're like oh that person's from there because that's how they look. Yeah. And in reality, it, but, but it feels really kind of strange because I can't necessarily say like. Well, we we might jokingly say Anna Jadawi, but it feels it feels strange because it, like it's so difficult to apply for citizenship here for me to say I would actually be Saudi. But if we lived here one more year, we could have applied for a really post- fifteen years. Yeah. Okay, is it Things okay. Are minimum? Yeah, and then you could apply for a post- is, no, Yes, yeah. yeah. And we're, I was like, okay, I could get dual, and then I was thinking, I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that they gave them out like that. Yeah, I think if you live somewhere for fifteen years, you can apply for either a citizenship or a. Post- I remember mm-hmm. someone saying this to me, and uh, yeah, I didn't. At the time, I didn't, I didn't even consider it. <laughs> uh, I don't know, I don't know whether it's yeah, like yeah. that anymore. But yeah, interesting. Yeah. But it definitely has a huge mark on who we are, like yeah. as in, uh, sure. molded us in so many yeah. ways. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And sure. I think that that's um, that's why coming back and seeing all the changes that we have um, has really been so eye-opening in terms of like the cultural changes and the way that it does actually change um, in terms of the. The architecture, and uh, we went to Ballad yesterday just to kind of look around and just. Uh, it's lovely there, isn't it? It's yeah, yeah. and it's changing. That's yeah. changing as well. Yeah. That's what the tourists want to see, by the way. 
I said it on yesterday. I shot an episode yesterday. I was like, tourists that come here they don't, don't want to see financial districts and glass buildings. No. They want to see the old town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And El Balad is, uh, is so, so photogenic. Culture, it's so rich. Yeah. And they really doubled down on it. It was like a 50 yeah. million real renovation two years ago. Yeah. Right after Corona, the Ministry of Culture, was it Ministry of Culture? Through the Al Balad, some development company that, that is responsible for repurposing and re rebuilding and but it, mm -hmm. they pumped 50 million into it and mm -hmm. now you look around they changed everything it's stunning it's yeah. so gorgeous clean. yeah it's the roads as well yeah exactly that's that's one thing i mean as a wheelchair user i was actually just like wow you can um, actually go here yeah, yeah. It's, uh, like stunning because we went to uh we actually traveled to morocco uh, back in uh, to marrakesh back in november and it's very similar in some ways you know an, an old town lots of market stalls you know very very old architecture that's in some ways, a similar style with um, with the the way that they're built in the the wooden kind of frames and things like that. I know yeah. some some of the Quite, some of the yeah. buildings, but um, I but, thought, wow, this is so much more accessible. Yeah. Um, I I prefer the architecture in some ways. I've forgotten the name of the special type of windows uh, with the with the wood, but um, the Moroccan one. Uh, no, the one in here, Balad, yeah, Roshan, yeah, yeah, exactly, the Roshan, yeah. Ro Roshan, yes. Roshan, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah, there we go. It's like literally like the, the, the image that represents Hejaz and Jidda. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So it was... Uh, Wheelchair friendly going around El Balad? Yeah, the yeah. Actually, of, yeah, yeah I, I don't think there were there were many... Uh, there were little little kind of bumps and steps and stuff. Steps every now and then, but we still managed to find a path that was step free. Yeah. And, uh, there, and were, there were signs as well saying exactly. step free access this way. Yeah, step free access hard. to all the mosques and, uh, you know, just where to go and the people were super, super friendly and, and getting around and stuff, stuff. You know, I've seen that more and more across town where handicapped parkings are um, mandatory everywhere yes. and yes. people actually respect them. Yeah. Now you actually have to have the sticker as you do in the UK and the US yeah. that you put mm -hmm. under your mirror where you can park and, um, and wheelchair access as well. Uh, it's something that you can tell has been if you're going to build a building or access, you have to be conscious and be wheelchair friendly. Mm, yeah. Uh, which is... It's definitely something I've realized. I mean, yeah. I live in Edinburgh in Scotland and it's an old, old city. Cobblestone. Where Cobblestone, yeah. hilly. Right. And, uh, you know, it's one of those, oh, it's a protected building. We can't build a, um, a lift. And I'm... Okay, that's fine. I understand it, of course. Yeah. But um, I think that that's made me more appreciative of some of the cities that have made that mandatory, like Jeddah for all of the new buildings. So uh, it's yeah, it's been it's it's nice to come back actually. It's it's nice. That's to be, genuinely yeah. one of the things we notice is like someone has actually gone. Oh, hold on a sec. Let's really think about this before we make this yeah. next move. Um, before well, we build like the corners. Yeah, like the corners. We noticed it's been there were thought about. It's really um, been thought about the beach. By the way, the beach is there now. Stunning. It really like, is. Yeah. I don't. I don't know. They must have imported the the sand and and made that all absolutely. You know, yeah. just so the land was extended, wasn't it? Yeah. I know yeah, what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah, just before the pier, there's like an area yes, by the hilt. Exactly. Yeah. Right by there. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah. And um, there's there's now a, a wheelchair accessible kind of like ramp all the way into the sea. So if you wanted to access the sea, and there's loads of like um, changing rooms and 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 showers and stuff. And I, I thought that that was a big big improvement. And especially you know as a wheelchair user, looking at places where I could go on um, on holiday. Like I would consider it as a, a destination that is wheelchair I, I, I friendlier. Yeah, the, yeah. I, I appreciate that they're conscious of that. Mm. Um, and um, and I yeah, I remember like I've I've noticed it as well. Uh, mm. Wanted to ask you, are you comfortable talking about your accident? Yeah, of course they yeah. are. Can you tell me what happened? Uh, yeah. So about um, coming to six years ago, I was uh, teaching in Sweden, and I. Um, I dived into a lake that was shallower than I expected, and I broke my neck. Yeah. Um, how did diving into a lake do that? Mm, so I must have forgive uh, the question. No, 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 not at all. So um, I it was nighttime when I was swimming, so oh. it was kind of silly on my part to begin with. But I'd been swimming in that lake lots, and I just um, jumped from the edge of the water, and I must have hit a rock that was just submerged. And uh, yeah, I hit my head and I yeah, I broke my neck. And so now I have the inability to move my kind of my legs and my hands. So uh, were yeah. you alone at the time? No, I was with some friends. So one of them actually uh, jumped in to like save me essentially. Yeah. Mm. And this was how long ago? Uh, about six years ago. Yeah. 
but uh, no, it hasn't it hasn't stopped me from from living my life. And uh, I, there's, there, I've had lots of great opportunities, like even you know traveling and coming back here, or uh, as I said, like traveling to Morocco and loads of other uh, countries. And uh, I, I play different sports, I paint, and there there are lots of good opportunities. Yeah, thankfully. Okay, it's all about attitude, and you have a very good attitude about it. I think there are many people who, uh, you know, having, you know, exp in the sidecar experienced this journey with you in a way of like as as part of your family. Mm. Um, I have met so many other people since then and learned so much about disability that it's an, you might kind of look at someone like Jared and think, oh, everyone's like that who has a disability. And there are many people who are incredibly inspiring um, who who have kind of seen obstacles and gone we should remove those obstacles or i'm going to overcome those obstacles um you know and and but i don't think there are enough and there are many people who are um not grabbing the opportunity to do those things because they because they're not they don't know that, it, that a lot of things are are accessible to mm -hmm. them and that you can do like and and often is the case that you think oh i can't do that now or i can't i can't I can't play FIFA. I can't mm. do this. I can't do that. Look at what you don't have rather than what yeah, you do. Yeah, what you yeah. do. It, perfect example, literally playing FIFA. I said to myself, oh, that's a shame. I won't get to be Jared of FIFA again uh, or lose. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but, but no, we, we, found, we found a company that do um, adapted, adapted control. controlling and, and technology of which it turns it into like a big Velcro board in which he can tap the buttons oh, and we can play and it was amazing he beat me so uh, yeah, oh, well, yeah so yeah oh, so <laughs> chatting shit <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah uh, but, but it was that's less about that but but the um but, but the more important thing is we could actually play again yeah, yeah. which which is amazing and it was it was so cool to be able to know that 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 was possible mm. but you didn't even and that, and that it, up until that moment you don't know so i just think um a lot of people genuinely when they have that happened to them mm. or they have any kind of um mm. major life-changing event or circumstance I, in many cultures people just regress and go into their homes don't come out again they're they're not seen or heard yeah. and i think jared is like genuinely um taking this opportunity to, to to be like you know what I really yeah. respect that. I, I want to do this other way. Either way, you can go yeah. either way. Yeah. If and 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 there's no tell. I mean, God, if if some if 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 I went through something like that, I don't know which way I, I would go. Yeah. Because you can go any way. And and, mm -hmm. and a friend of mine, he's a friend now actually, but all the way back to episode 17, Jake Burry. So he has been working at Ramco for 17, 18 years. Mm -hmm. Five years ago, went on a scuba diving trip, jumped off the back of the boat, propellers were on, and lost one of his legs. Mm -hmm. and down by a leaf where it's all very primitive. Yeah. 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 So three, four hours out of the ocean, they had to manage that situation. What wow. Back to a leaf, air transported in to Jeddah. Yeah. And uh, he ended up losing all of his leg. Yeah. He said that that's really when his life started. Mm. Uh, really. It's a new life. Take one day for granted. Mm -hmm. uh, which I thought was a very powerful story. Mm. But I, I think actually when I, when I when I talk about my story, I think uh, the one thing that I at least try to get across is uh, like people look at me after my accident, uh, especially those who don't know me, and they 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 um, they they pity my situation and they really look down upon me in lots of ways. And I can see how people would do that. Yeah, yeah and it's kind of like a, oh, you know, your your life is so much worse off. You're in a wheelchair, etc. And that that's a real shame because I think a lot of people have limitations in their lives, you know. Yeah. And um, I, it hasn't stopped me from from doing doing all these great things. And I, the other thing as well is is a lot of people say, oh, you know, it's such such an inspiration is a big one I get. And I I do I do really understand that. It, you know, it's inspiring to think that wow, that person has a limitation and they're really trying to overcome it. And so it's relative in lots of ways. But I think it should really be, be taken as a, a sense of uh, for anyone going through something, okay, I have an obstacle in my life and I want to overcome it and I, can, I know I have the resilience to do that and I can. 
Um, so that's that's one thing that I, I like to put across because a lot of people do do have those kinds of uh, reactions. Yeah, so. I can mm. see how how, mm. how you were met with such reactions. Mm. Going back to the days when it was still new mm -hmm. uh, and you were alone, you know, with your thoughts, mm -hmm. um, what kind of attitude did you have towards it? Uh, early days um, early days I was actually quite confused I didn't really yeah I didn't really understand the full extent and what what might be be the future I mean I think the first couple of questions to the doctor were like does that mean I'll be missing football this season and he was like I think he'll be missing football for a while you used to play a lot Tom yeah yeah I love football we're, we're big Liverpool fans big, sorry, big, sorry to hear that there. what happened this season oh John. on paper Oh, on paper, it's the second paper. best team, I think, oh, after yeah. after City. Oh, oh no. I'm, oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, it's lovely meeting you. Yeah, yeah. likewise. Yeah. Oh, God. Send us clock, please, to Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, you're big yeah. on football. Huh? Yeah, 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 big on football. Yeah, yeah but um, I, I think that that was honestly the the first question. I think uh, the second question, I don't know. I think I was, I was, I was thinking a lot about, like, what if I hadn't done this or what if I, if only I'd, you know, what if thought about it. Yeah. A lot of those. And then I thought, actually, this is not helping me because it, I really cannot change my situation now. Um, I'm, I'm going to have to really, um, really look forward and be, be more, uh, accept, accept the situation, you know, really, really be, be as, uh, as positive, positive, you know, as optimistic as I can be. And yeah. It's, you know, I haven't looked back. So the most important conversations are the ones we have with ourselves. Yeah. At end of the day, when you're alone in bed and, uh, you know, that voice in your head, really positivity or negativity could be the reason why we choose to be positive and go about our lives in a good way or, mm -hmm. or, or not. And those that, you know, you, as you said, they become more of a recluse. And I'm so happy mm -hmm. that it did not mm -hmm. affect your, uh, mm -hmm. your happiness. And for people watching this episode, I don't think they would have noticed that you're in a wheelchair until we brought it up. Uh, yeah. You know, true. based on your attitude, true. especially those listening on audio, they would have not mm -hmm. noticed. Uh, yeah. And and that's a testament to, you know, the great head that you have on your shoulders, mm -hmm. honestly speaking. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. I think, honestly, it is, um, as much as he doesn't like saying, he is inspiring because I think, uh, I, but I, I get what you mean in that respect because it's not it's not about, oh, isn't he inspiring simply because of his disability it's not it's not about the disability He's existing itself. post yeah existing you know, all this kind of thing i think it's like and it's the same like I've, I've spoken been lucky enough to speak to a few um paralympic athletes before and they all say the same as well people come up to them and they go oh god aren't you just amazing and it's like yeah but you'd say the same as an as an athlete like if they are an athlete you'd say the same as an olympic athlete a, para a paralympic athlete what makes them any more amazing and i guess um you know what what makes what makes Jared amazing isn't his disability; it's his attitude, regardless of it. It's Definitely. the way that people treat him, and he's able to see the positivity in that. It's the way that people come up and try and try and push his wheelchair, and he goes, "I can I can push myself, yeah. but yeah. not get really annoyed and angsty and upset about it." Which is very typical, right? Yeah, it, it's it's more typical. Those who get frustrated, I can do it, you know. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And seeing that, you know, you're gonna alienate people if you're not positive. Um, and and trying to kind of change change the mindset of people in going, I can be independent and 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 allowing people to go. Oh, I guess I shouldn't treat people with disabilities as if um, they you know they need to be patronised yes. or pitied or anything like that. Yeah. And and it, it, I mean it's definitely changed my it's opened up my eyes completely and and lots of our family. Um, you know, before if my nan still goes, oh, isn't it so sad about Jared? And it's like, no, not really. It's not because if anything, it's it's kind of it's changed you to be a uh, I would say a better person. Because she was now I'm still a, still a dickhead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know that one. Good, su <laughs> good support system. Yeah, yeah, is essential. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very very lucky actually. Uh, after I had my accident, a lot of my friends banded together and. Uh, like help raise some money for some equipment and uh they were they were to me i had visits every day and yeah i was you know very supporting in that sense mm -hmm. and uh, i've realized the importance of a uh, support network and like mm -hmm. offering my support when i can um yeah it's been it's been so good and i think in a lot in lots of ways as well um it's been very good for um educating my friends i, I mean i was ignorant to uh, a lot of the needs of you know disabled people or uh, just what kind of equipment's out there, or I, I don't, I don't really know a lot, a lot of different things. But 
I think in, in many ways, like if you look at the attitude of our, our parents now, uh, I think I think actually our dad laughs a lot more about like I make disabled jokes all the time because I can now that I'm part of this minority. Um, <laughs> And uh, it's it's really funny to to actually hear him laugh about the things that I joke about. So yeah, it's, yes. it's funny. It's a lot of people are also. taken up. Yeah, a lot of people are taken aback by it. Sometimes they're like, mm, "Can I laugh? Can, can I laugh?" Yeah. Yeah. I know it's, it's like, jokes. So I'm it's like, like, no. Yeah, I I, I started doing um, as like stand up comedy or sit down comedy. I guess is more accurate. And uh, it's a very cathartic um, experience, really. But uh, yeah, I'd say yeah, it's uh, it's good fun. Yeah. It's just uh, it's 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 mental as much as it is physical, mm. and and I think that's why it's <clears throat> it's such a challenge for for mm. for people who, you know, go through something like that. It's yeah. it's really obviously it's physical, but it's really mental as well. Mm. When I get a paper cut, it's mental for me, you know. And I <laughs> <laughs> so I, I admire your attitude, honestly. Like I'm learning a lot from you. I just, you know, like we we have our food, we have our shelter. Mm. We have our security. If you think about it, there really isn't much to complain about. Mm. Uh, We're very privileged in different ways. In Alhamdulillah, yeah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. and all that. Yeah. Um, for yeah, lots to be thankful for. Yeah. Um, some deep questions. <laughs> A human behavior, Matt, that most annoys you. The human behavior that most annoys me. Yeah. Who? What gets under your skin? Ruffles your feathers. That's a really difficult question because mm. there's so much that annoys me. But uh, but I guess it's people not being patient with others. Mm. And that's probably the most one of the things that annoys me the most when people aren't patient with you. If I like, it takes me a while to understand things sometimes and get across things. And if people aren't patient enough with you, um, it it's it it comes from a place of ignorance for me. It's like almost, oh, I'm. I've got, I've understood this. Why do you not understand this? Or uh, something similar to that, to that respect, or I'm doing this quicker. Why are you not doing this as quickly? Or whatever it is, whether that's work, friends, you know, whatever it is, it's, it's having, having patience with others uh, and people not having patience with others. The opposite of tolerance. Yeah. Which is something that you were alluding to earlier. Yes. Yeah. Funny because you have so many intolerances. I have many intolerances. (laughs) The irony being that I hate intolerance and, and I have the, many the irony lacto, being lacto is one of them. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's one of them. Yeah. And, and the other irony being I'm the most impatient person you can find. <laughs> yeah. You gotta make it work somehow. Yeah, yeah. Yin and yang, you know. Yin and yang, yeah. Uh worst fear, Jared. Do you have a fear out there that you fear the most? Do you have a fear out there that you fear the most? You get where I'm going. Like, what is my what is my biggest fear? What's your, you know, what's your from, biggest fear? Spiders. I really don't like spiders. I would say um, I hate spiders. Yeah, I know they're the worst. The honestly, worst. I remember once we were actually out in the desert and um, someone came across a camel spider. You know those camel spider. Camel spider. I'm uncomfortable talking about spiders. Yeah, I know. They're sorry. I will. I'm on the arachnophobic. One hundred. I yeah. Uh, same here. Honestly, what? I genuinely yeah yeah. <laughs> Does that to you? You feel like yeah. Oh no, they're so creepy. So uh, there's such a thing as a camel spider. Yeah, literally like. Yeah, well, yeah, I'm sure you can imagine um, the size and and what they what they might do. But um, apart from apart from spiders, um, I think, and th- this has probably been a, something that I it's still something I'm actually dealing with. Um, is uh, I don't I, I often feel like I uh, am worried about embarrassing myself, um, and that that's really weird after. A, a, having a disability where a lot of the things you do, even your bodily motions are uh, like can be perceived as embarrassing. Um, just because I think actually growing up in the Middle East, especially in Jeddah, it's all about like your reputation in lots of ways. It was all about like um, whether it was like the people you knew or the parties you went to or just um, the right kind of friends or, you know, all that kind of stuff. I think that not being a part of that, being excluded and being lonely, feel it's almost like humiliating in some ways. And I think I think that I, I, it was a big part of growing up is not avo- uh, is avoiding that, I suppose. And it's still something that I'm coming to or getting to grips with. Um, but I've learned to kind of process that in lots of ways because I will naturally spill a lot of things. Mm. And I require a lot of help, a lot of people help to facilitate my life. And 
you know, disability can be seen in lots of ways as something that is humiliating, something that you should put in the background and not and not kind of uh, address, expose or address or anything like that. And so, um, al although I, I sometimes feel like it's not my job to be educating everyone, you know, it should just be something that is more represented in in society. Um, I at the same time I do feel like uh, a big. Um, how can I put it, like um, somebody that does represent the the community in just simply being out and about and and having someone help me or having someone or needing assistance with things and people looking over and going, oh, wow, is that what he does? Or, yeah. It's the problem so, with our society. Yeah. We have a big staring problem. Yeah, yeah. So. I think it's just a lack of education, you know? If, if you saw more people needing help on TV, in films, then it would just be like, oh, he's just another one of the, you know, people that needs help. It's not a big deal. Whereas I think that the fact that it is so tucked in the in the background, as soon as it comes to the foreground, it's a case of like, oh my gosh, what is that? Wow, let me. It's abnormal. It's I need to I need to consume that yeah. that moment. It's uh, it's very uh, uh, you you really you notice. It. I'll wheel into the room or I'll wheel into uh, into like a space, and you'll just see a lot of people looking over and being like, oh wow, that's so different. But it wouldn't be different if it was more uh, represented or if it was more kind of. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Educated. I mean, th does it start on the in, in the schooling level? I I believe so. I mean, I never saw any books growing up with somebody in a wheelchair. No, normalized. And, Good one. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's not normalized. Yeah, no. absolutely. And and even if it was the the kinds of representation that you do see in books and films, that are ones where either you're you're uh, you know uh, paralyzed from the neck down, and it's just a case of like every single thing you do, you need help with. Or it's a case of you're in this big clunky wheelchair and you can't push yourself. You constantly do need help, and it's a balancing independence with representation is really difficult. So uh, yeah, it's I don't know. It's uh, no, I get it. I, I, yeah, yeah, it's a tough one. Any regrets? Any regrets? Any regrets? Don't say jumping into the lake. I want something else. <laughs> <laughs> Too obvious. You know, the funny thing was my first thought didn't even go there. It did it? No. Okay. Sorry. Sorry for leading you in that. <laughs> nah. Um. What? Where, where did your first thought go? My first thought was actually, um, I would love to be more involved, or wish I had got more involved earlier, in uh, in film and music, more artsy kind of things, and less I sporty. I. Less I'm not sure actually. I think maybe this is just the way that the path is going now. I don't really know. But, um, and I still have that opportunity, I think, but um, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure. I think I, I really enjoy uh, like film in general. And thankfully I've, I've had the opportunity recently to help to produce a film about uh, a kind of uh, woman that has a spinal cord injury. And they, they were consulting me on kind of uh, the script and the ideas and stuff and that's been such a fun process so films movies you and you enjoy very much i think i would like to be more involved in those i think i, I have a lot of uh i want to be more creative i think just with uh with that kind of stuff and i absolutely adore music and although i might not be able to play the piano to produce something i think that i have like a, a keen ear for doing yeah, things for it yeah yeah so Maybe. definitely do yeah what what kind of music what genre do I am one of those people that <laughs> he's laughing because I'm one of those people that when I say everything, I mean like absolutely everything, everything. Huh? Like you know, like Mongolian throat singing. I'm there. Do you know what I mean? I'm <laughs> all you like, reggae. He's playing it. I'm like, wow. Are like really, just listen really, to it. Just listen to that. Are we you know? really on that deep? <laughs> yeah. I love uh, uh, Free jazz again. You know, uh, <laughs> <laughs> about that all that there are genres I've never heard of yeah, <laughs> that it's like genuine. you're not oh. the latest uh, what's that T Tibetan trance Tibetan. yeah Tibetan trance Tibetan deep trance exactly you won't believe it how about movies any favourite ones depends on the genre I would say um, I have every do you have a favourite one do you have a favourite one I do I do there was uh, so I did a couple of uh, film courses whilst I was at university I, I had a couple of uh, electives let's say and um we analyze this one film. It's a Turkish German film called, uh, I think the original name is like Auf der anderen Seite, but in English, I think it's called The Edge of Heaven, uh, Fatih Hakin. And it's it's incredible um, because- That's your favorite film? Yeah. Wow. wow. Yeah, it's yeah, it's amazing. Is it spoken in Turkish or- Yes, German? half Turkish, half German. Oh, Turkish, okay. Yeah, and- uh, Interesting dichotomy. Yeah, no, it really is. It's, it's about 
uh, I, I guess in many ways, his identity as being a, a Turkish German or a German Turkish. There's person. a big Turkish settlement in Germany. Definitely. Right? Yeah, huge. Yeah, there is some huge. something there. And he has a very like divided identity. <clears throat> and so, uh, but I just love it because in every single scene, he everything that you see will have a meaning of some sort. So like you'll go past, um, uh, it'll kind of uh, show uh, the number of a door and that number will refer to a unique date in either Turkish or German history. And that will refer to then the next scene and then it will be related in some way. But that film is incredible. Smart, just the, smart film. It's, yeah, it's, um, it's a complete, if you watch it, it's just a mirror image. So half of it takes place in Germany, half in, half in Turkey. And it, kind of a mirror image of it. Ah, you have to watch it. So. Well, I would I'm not typically when you when I ask someone what your favorite movie is, it's one of the top tens of all time, you know. Yeah. Godfather. True, true. My last guest said Wizard of Oz or, or yeah, Pulp Wizard Fiction. Wizard of Oz, interesting. Good one, yeah. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. 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 Girl that was on yesterday. So that was the best. Yeah. Um, but but interesting that you went totally off the beaten path. Mm, uh, I really enjoyed that one. Yeah, really good film. I thought it would be Shaun of the Dead because it's mine. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, if you're going comedy, yeah, definitely. That's like one of our favorite films. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The zombie one, yeah. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shaun of the Dead. It was. It's a joke version of the Dawn of the Dead. One. Yes, yes, yeah, 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 it's, yeah. It's the British film. There's something about that trilogy. I mean, yeah, the first two especially yeah. to have a real significant like place in our heart because mm-hmm. it was one of the first when we were just kind of coming of age and watching and understanding comedy. But it, the more you watch it, the more references. Every single thing has been very carefully thought through. I think that's mm-hmm. like. The meticulousness of, of watching film and analyzing, analyzing music for the both of us mm. is such a heightened level where it's like, what makes that good? And why is that good? And mm. what have they done there? Oh, they've linked it to that. And oh, they've done this. It's a it's a kind of a little bit perfectionist, but at the same time, it's, it's appreciating the effort that someone goes through to make something so good. Yeah. And it's so well written and every little thing has been thought of. If you go back and watch it, you'll notice that that links to that and that links to that and it's everything it's clever, yeah. kind of have a... Underlying stories. Yeah. All about the writing. Is is that where it's won or lost? The script, yeah, the writing, so. is is it either won or lost? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And in lots of ways, it's the things they choose to put in the scene as well. Yeah. Like you see a shot and there'll be something kind of uh, like resting against the wall or yeah. you know, the way that they've shot it. Like even just the mirror scene where he pushes in the mirror. Yeah. Like that. That's just, uh, I think he's taken lots of different techniques from other films that mm. just make... Uh, they're kind of like jump scares, but they're also it's, yeah. it's comedy at the same at the same time. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's quite it's Edgar that. Wright's directing. Yeah, he's yeah, he's yeah, so good. Amazing. But I think that's the thing about it. It sounds obvious, but like every little thing that goes into it, they've spoken about it before about about their filmmaking and how, um, you know, getting the right location manager and getting the right person who mm. who's thought of the props and every little kind of element, the cinematographer, the color grading, that you know everything that makes it what it is. It kind of has such a profound impact on it that you makes takes you to a place that it is and and tells that story in a way that makes you connect with it in a completely different mm. way. Like and I know the acting the acting I, I think is often not the biggest part of it. Mm. It does it does actually like it's the main thing that people get the awards for. It's the thing that people know people from. Yes. But often that is just the final kind of kind of touching icing. to it. The icing on the cake. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. It's like an iceberg. Like there's so much under the surface that exactly. goes into that uh yeah. Um, have you guys been to the Red Sea Film Festival? No, no. Second no. year, third oh, time now. Okay. Yeah, it's on. It's on for the third time. Uh, come when was it? I think December. December. Oh, okay. So if you can make it back for that, I was lucky enough to be chosen to open the Red Sea Film Festival. Me and and Raya, this girl that's been doing it for twenty years, not Red Sea Film Festival, but she's been involved in Hollywood and interviewed. You name it. So she's yeah. been, she was my co host. I was a sitting duck. It's the first time I do it. Yeah. Um, and I got to see front row what it was like to be part of a film festival. Amazing. It, it was, it was incredible. And it looked, not that I had any reference, but just looking at the who's who, the A listers. At one point, I was on stage standing next to Naomi Campbell and she's like, <laughs> uh, uh, should I sit down or should I continue? I'm like, no, you're fine, Naomi. Just stand there. You're <laughs> you know, she's like, okay, thanks. You're not like, what am I supposed no, to do? You're right. No, no yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but that whole world is incredible. Like, there was hundreds of movies that were were part of it that were showing it. It was it's just a world that I really appreciated. Honestly, cinema just you know, it's part of the arts and mm. just takes you away 
from the day-to-day -day bullshit that we have to deal with life and yeah it's de just definitely it's like a comic relief from life uh, to just tune out for like a couple of hours and be there uh, but definitely something you guys should should come to next next time it's on which will yeah. be in december uh, and just to see that on, in Saudi, I mean, who would have thought a film festival oh, of gosh. that magnitude? <laughs> How are you going to say? Yes. yes. We, we yeah. were around when cinemas, for, well, when the first cinema actually almost did open or did open for a little for bit. a few days. For a few days or something in what used to be Suwari Landmark. Um, on not far. Tariq Malik, yeah. Tariq Malik. Um, okay. Actually, very close to here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You know where, I like, know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Suwari yes, Landmark. yes, yes. I think it's now like Hebrew Dialysis yeah. Center. You know the one that's like a, I think it's a government building with a yes. huge, it's right there next to... Of course, to yeah, 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 yeah. Like a, an ice skating rink on the second floor okay. and a little mm. food court and things like that. Yeah. And it was like shaped round like this. Mm. And it, um, yeah, in the very corner, there was, there was a cinema and they tried to, they tried to run it. And this was honestly back in like 2006, seven. How did they get approval? I, I had no, no idea. No. But they, but, but people went in, maybe it was just for families only. And therefore, there were just kids in the audience. Yeah, mum and dad were. Yeah. So I don't know, but it was it, it. They were just trying it out, and they actually had to stop it a couple of times because it got so hot mm. in there, yeah. and they yeah. they not thought of fans and things like that. And it was like, yeah, it was it was mixed as well. It was like um, loads of kids around, and I think we sat down and watched Valiant, the pigeon film. Um, yeah. I think we're about to get some people into trouble here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was the guy running it was called. Yeah. Uh, no, no. But then it's. Sh it sh it shut down a few days later. Yeah. And, and then we were like, we, we never saw cinemas again in Saudi. As I was saying, like, a while ago, I think it, it was very much for, forgotten. There'd be this idea of, uh, there'd be such a negative kind of association with culture and the idea of art and music and film and these things and not understanding that free expression of that element is so important in, in quality of life, as you were saying. Yep. And I think the more that, that people neglect that, the harder it's going to be for people to to enjoy their life in a country, and and you know as much as it might people might see it as kind of something, you know, becoming more westernized. I think it doesn't. It, it's not about westernization. It's about um, allowing yourself to be yourself in in a, within a certain respect. And I think that 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 is a human right. Like it ultimately yeah, is, no matter is. which country you're in, it's so important to have. Modern, to have the modernization, I would say, is important. Modernization, yeah. not 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 necessarily westernization but to, yeah. to modernize yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. to be current with the times yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. I agree to compete on a global level sorry go ahead no i was going to say actually um what you were saying about quality of life i think one big difference that um i remember was like n now just going around and not seeing family section and single section How about that i think uh, that was that was a big big change and yeah. i think th even uh, discussing that with friends when i went back to uh the uk <clears throat> was uh, was a big thing <clears throat> I think, um, excuse me, <clears throat> some water. No, I'm okay. Thanks. Um, I think actually just seeing now groups of people going for like a meal together and they're not necessarily married or related. Yeah. I think is is just, it's, it's so great to see, you know, within, within a certain respect, I think is, uh, it, it, it's good to see that opening up and seeing people actually feeling more comfortable being out of the house and allowing that. And as you say, it really does contribute to quality of life and, Without without that fear, I think we have a, we have a few True. we have a few stories of like being fearful of. I remember I used to go out with my classmates, and I remember we were once in a restaurant, and someone came in and shouted like, "Oh, the mutawa, the mutawa!" And we were we were fearful, even though we were just at, sat at the same table as as some of our classmates. I think we were in like year eight, you know, and uh, and I remember sprinting off down the road and hiding. And I think that not not having that fear of uh, of you know, something that if you're still being respectful, um, you're not having that fear that you're doing something wrong uh, and and just having a meal out is something that- And you, you weren't know, doing anything wrong. No, I mean, it's it's now- it almost felt like you were a criminal. Yes, and I think that that was something that, seeing that change and um, allowing for those, uh, as you say, like modernization you know, aspects of life, I think has been one of the one of the biggest things that, yeah. that we've we've noticed. Definitely, society was a post was suffocated. It was suffocated in, in the nineties yeah. and two thousands, and and the level of happiness has gone through the roof now. Uh, I know I travel less. I know a lot of my friends uh, from all ages travel less. There's more to do here. Yeah. Uh, just the, the 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 turnaround. I mean, my son was born in twenty seventeen. 
<clears throat> I don't think he'd be able to fathom if I was to tell him that women couldn't drive. I wasn't allowed into the mall. Um, places closed down for prayers. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, there's been a real reverse in, uh, and it's not easy to change the mindset of a culture. And to do that in the, in the span of two, three years, yeah, to you know, just one after the other after the other, but it's as they say, all gravy. It's working. Mm -hmm. It's it's really all working. Like you wouldn't mm -hmm. think. So if an alien landed in Jeddah now, they would never think that this wasn't the way the city operated as recently as five or six years ago. Yeah, mm -hmm. but no qualms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it it's great. I think it it allows. Um, it allows itself as a country because I, I think that there were there was so much. Uh, whenever someone asks, "What was it like to grow up in Saudi Arabia?" It's really hard to tell because you're like, "But I was a child, so I don't really get it." You know what I mean? Because you, when you're a child, you just do what you do without really understanding where you are or what you're doing. And it's only when you become an adult that you're conscious enough to understand what what the world is that you're living in. Mm. And I think that looking back at it, it's it's crazy to think that. Um, the limitations on the life that we had are not the same that the children of today are, are growing up with. Um, it'd be really interesting to know what it would, would have been like for us growing up in this climate now, like to, to see how, yeah, how different true. it would have been. Yeah. Whether whether our parents would have stayed longer or would have or, or would have would have wanted to arrive now rather than then. Mm -hmm. you don't, no idea. I mean, they're due a visit, by the way. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. They really do. Yeah. They really do. Thanks, guys, for your time, honestly. Um, again, going into this with no notes, it really felt like a conversation uh, in a coffee shop. Mm. Um, and uh, it's, it's amazing to see the whole thing come full circle for you guys to have spent some time here, um, know the culture inside out, been away, and then come back. It's, it's amazing to hear your take on all of that. So thank you for sharing. And, and honestly, Jared, thank you for sharing your story about uh, your, your accident. I mean... Uh, and, 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 and I hope it provides inspiration to anyone going through anything, you know, difficult. It doesn't have to be physical, mm -hmm. um, that, uh, you know, you went through this and, and, and here you are as chirpy as, uh, whatever the most chirpiest thing in the world. <laughs> so I thank you for sharing, uh, your stories and, um, enjoyed having you guys on. Yeah. Thank, thank you for having us. Thanks guys. Um, we will, uh, publish this in a few weeks time. You'll probably be back in the UK by then. Yeah. and uh, I'm sure the listeners will enjoy. So like and subscribe, as they say. I'm kidding. I don't say that at the end. Ah, hit the, the bell for yeah. that. Yeah. 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 that. Subscribe. Because yeah. yeah. my head it is like, Mo, I need you. I'm like, I'm not saying. Yeah. Okay? <laughs> I'm not an influencer. <laughs> I, have to, I stumbled upon the world of podcasting. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank, All you. The best. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.